How is everyone? Good. Why an exciting day. We were in legislative hall, so we are back in session uh, after a four week break. So, um, so it's been a pretty busy week. Today we did some nominations uh, for the state weather and it can be a number of different things, judicial, it can be for any of the boards uh, that the governor would appoint somebody to. Um, and then we ran some resolutions and some legislation today. What I wanna do is hand out a map because oftentimes people, um, how many of you know uh, what a state senator does? You guys in the back, put your hands down. <laughs> you guys don't count. Okay. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand out a map. And the reason why I'm gonna do it is because it, everything in purple will give you an idea of what I cover. So I have over about 135 communities from Newcastle, which is literally the tip of Newcastle. And I don't mean, I used to have the Penn Acres and the Wilmington Manor. This is strictly the city of Newcastle, um, all the way down Route 9. I take parts of Bear, as well as down to Middletown to Vance Neck Road. So if you're familiar with any of that, but hopefully this map will give you an idea. And what I also did was had them highlight, there's a little key at the very bottom, and it will highlight where there's construction taking place, even a little bit outside of my district. Um, design and planning will be highlighted in orange. As you know, <laughs> we are a state with road construction from one end to another. And for the longest time, I would say to people, I have the most construction happening, which eventually I'll have the best roads and then we'll start this whole process over. Um, and then uh, lastly, anything in green, which it's, it's just very small in a few areas, is uh, repavement programs, projects that are gonna take place in 2023. So, Cindy, let me thank you very much for putting all of this together um, because although I spend a lot of time in your city, I'm in uh, whether I'm visiting places uh, or I'm having dinner. I always encourage people, if you see me, please come talk to me. And it's okay if I'm with my family. They are so used to it that it doesn't phase them. Um, and don't be alarmed if they start chiming in as well. Um, but I am very fortunate as a state senator to have two municipalities. I don't just have the city of Old Newcastle, I also have Delaware City, which I'm very proud of all of the things that we have done on both er both ends of my district when it uh, concerns my municipalities. Thank you. Um, so we, you know, I spend a lot of time with council members. I also spend a lot of time with individual um, citizens. If you've ever heard me say, I give out my cell number all the time. If you send me an email, please know that from, Janu from January to June, we are in and out of session. And it probably doesn't sound like a lot because we're only in Dover 47 days. So it's not a lot of time, but it is a lot of time to get legislation through. And I don't always feel like we have to mandate or legislate every single thing, but there are times where we have to make sure that we put some requirements on something that's happening. And I'll talk a little bit about legislation in a few minutes. But that being said, we're in there a short period of time. So our jobs are our district. I'm fortunate, I have five reps that I work with throughout my district as you look at the map. And that is Representative Cook, Representative Mimi Brown, Representative Hensley, Representative Val Longhurst, and for some reason I am drawing, oh, Representative Morrison. For a second there, I was like, oh, I'm missing one. Um, and so each piece of my district needs a little bit of something. What Old Newcastle may require is not gonna be something that is required in Delaware City or out in Fox Run. And so my job is to pay attention and to listen and to be able to serve everybody equally as best that I can. Um, you had a lot of speakers here tonight and hopefully everybody felt that it was worthwhile to get to hear a little bit about what's happening in and around where you live. And I think that 
again, Cindy, you did a great job in making sure that we all came together. So thank you. So overall, what a senator does really is enrich the lives of the people that we represent. Um, there are times that I've taken votes that I may not necessarily agree with, but my district wants it. And so that is how I vote. Um, if I don't hear from you, I don't know. So please do not ever feel like, oh, I don't know whether or not to reach out to her, or I don't know, this issue might seem really small. There is nothing too small. And it is really important for me to hear from anybody and everyone. Um, and it can be from state benefits. Um, how many of you have state benefits? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, well, we can have that conversation too. Um, that, but in, I, I'm, I'm really truly making very light of that. Uh, that, was a, that was a long discussion and there's a lot of boards that are, that a lot of people on a particular board that is involved in that. And, you know, I'm certainly happy to talk about how the legislature passes legislation and how that took place and why we believed when we were doing the vote, we were doing the right vote. Um, the next thing that I do is that my job is to uphold what the council has deemed that the city, my cities want or need. And so it is unique, right? It's different than my Fox Run, my Red Lion Chase, my Middletown area. But if your council is doing a charter change and that legislation funnels up to me, I've had people say, oh, I hate that charter change. And I say, fantastic, did you go to the council meeting? Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> okay, well, that's where it starts. It actually starts with your council. And if your council is passing it to me, that means that they have passed it and this is something that needs to go into place. So I am upholding what your council has, has uh, voted on, but represented you in what should take place for your city. So think about it that way. It's not my job to tell the council what to do. You have elected the council to make sure that they've heard you and, and things that you want in your town. It is my job that if we have to change it statewide, then I'm able to make those charter changes in the Senate. And then of course, pass it over to my colleague, which is Representative Mimi Brown for your district um, and have her pass it in the House. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about legislation, bond committee. I served as the chair for two years. Actually, in my 10 years as being your Senator, which thank you uh, to everyone who voted for me this uh, past November. I absolutely love what I do. I love representing um, my district, more importantly, where I grew up. And so I have a lot of uh, rich history in the city of Newcastle. And I think one of my oldest partners, and maybe I shouldn't say that way, would be Mr. Wilson, um, because there's a lot of family and long history. He was my basketball coach <laughs> a long time ago. Um, and, uh, he also was a very, very good friend to, to my family. So um, I am always indebted to um, the great man that he is and the things that he's not only done for me personally and my family, but also for this town, because he certainly loves it probably as much as I do, maybe a little bit more because he's a little bit older than me. But <laughs> um, So in the Senate, I have held every seat and I've made sure that I've been on every committee in my 10 years, with the exception of one seat. And I will be forever okay not to hold that seat. Um, because when I went into the Senate, I went in to represent the people of my district, not necessarily to, um, to figure out what was the best committees or anything like that. But I've certainly enjoyed my time in different committees and learning the different things. Um, and different ways that we can do legislation and how we can represent our district. So uh, recently I was the bond chair and so that gave me a lot of flexibility and the ability to make sure that I took care of projects with inside the district. Now I still currently sit on bonds so I will continue doing what I do, um, but I've had the fortunate in the 10 years to help our first responders like Goodwill, help our council as they have talked about projects that need to be changed or things that needed to be changed in 
um, in the city. I've also done things related to the churches, whether it's uh, a stone wall or it's an HVA system because um, the air conditioners are too loud. Whatever it may be, these are things that can get addressed through our bond committee. And really it's about economic growth and making sure that it's bricks and mortar being taken care of at all times. Um, and then lastly, legislation. So I have run quite a bit of legislation in my 10 years. Um, although again, I also find ways that we don't necessarily have to regi uh, legislate. Um, I ran a task force during the pandemic for uh, guardianship. And it was partnering with our Medicaid uh, group and um, our hospital systems. And what we found is that we had more people staying in the hospital for longer time under acute care purposes. And if you are aware of the healthcare system, then you know that staying in a hospital, it's not where you wanna be. It is truly meant for sick people. And when your sick time is over, then you do need to do a step down unit. It might be a rehab facility, but ultimately the goal is to get home. Um, and so we found that there were a, a number of people that were remaining in the hospital for over a year at a time. And so we needed to figure out ways to alleviate that pressure because it obviously affects all of us in different ways, right? It affects insurance premiums, it affects the hospital rates, it also affects the mental being of the patient that's in the hospital. And so by running the task force, it was honestly, it was probably one of the best task forces that we've had in the state. Um, people were solving their own problems sitting at the table. And so out of, uh, I truly, and when I do a task force, I set a certain amount of meetings and whatever we're covering, that's what we're covering. And if it needs legislation, then I run the legislation but we were successful in only needing three pieces of legislation, considering we were de dealing with federal laws and regulations, Medicaid, Medicare, and then the hospital systems. So that's, the, that's what we should be doing. That's the type of work that I like to do, compromise, conversation, and communication. Um, last year though, um, as we exited and are still exiting the pandemic, um, I was doing some national searches and looking at different things that were affecting people. And one of the things that I found was that we had a number of situations related to predators, um, not just nationally, but also in the state of Delaware. And so I ran a package of bills that were called the safe package, safety and accountability for everyone. And those bills related to coaches and teachers. Teachers and coaches are not predators but predators are teachers and coaches. And so um, from the time that I started running the legislation in March to when we ended session on June 30th, there were over nine arrests in the state of Delaware related to predators, all from janitors to teachers to coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, one of our private schools had their second predator in less than 10 years. <clears throat> and so when the governor sat down to, pa to sign all the legislation, um, he commented it was the largest legislation package that he has signed in one sitting in his um, almost eight years as governor. So I take it very seriously when we are changing our laws and making sure that we are making them better for all of our citizens. Um, and then one piece of legislation that was controversial um, but I spent a lot of time working on it, but I also spent time on a virtual call with over 500 teachers telling us, a group of us, I'm not going to school tomorrow. After the Uvalde shooting and the 19 students that were unidentifiable to the parents, teachers were alarmed and they were afraid. And so what I never wanna do is infringe on anyone's rights, but I do want us to set guidelines for it. and. Uh, my husband being an avid hunter, you know, he certainly follows the rules and is very, very um, diligent about his, um, his uh, guns when he's out hunting. And so therefore we all need to practice safe policies and best practices. Um, but myself and another colleague ran the discontinuation of assault weapons. And I thought that that was an important piece of legislation. Agree, don't agree, it is A-OK. -okay. Here's what I do know, is that we do have a change in our culture. 
we do see that the mental health is rising in the state of Delaware, actually nationally. And so anything that I can do to put a pin and a pause in anyone thinking about taking someone else's life, then that is what my job is to do. And so I did make sure that in that piece of legislation, there are concessions. If you currently own one today, that is okay. You're not a criminal and you shouldn't be a criminal. If you wanna to go to a shooting range, please, by all means, go do that. Can you purchase another one in Delaware? Absolutely not. And as long as you're traveling with your receipt or certificate that says that you own it, you are okay. So otherwise, that gives you a little bit of a type of legislation that I have um, run in the state of Delaware and hopefully I've covered everything I've tried to. I think I've covered it from top to bottom of my district. Um, but does anyone have any questions? I'm going to drop the mic and run out. <laughs> <laughs>